This is Canada, and what you might not know is things aren't always as safe as you'd expect in Canada. Sometimes. Canada, like other parts of the world, has issues. For example, Canada has really high crime rates in small towns per capita, higher than most big cities. But today we're going to focus on those big cities. Anything over 100,000 people. That's right. We're going to talk about the big cities with the most overall crime in Canada by crime rate. And before you all get upset, these statistics are directly from Statistics Canada, based on data from 2018. All the cities are ranked based on a CSI, a Crime Severity Index. It is a term used by Statistics Canada to measure all police-reported crime. It takes into consideration both the volume and the seriousness of the offenses. So that includes property crimes, homicides, vandalism, assaults, robbery, breaking and entering, fraud, drug trafficking, impaired driving, and much more. And before we finally get started here, let's mention that all these cities have many great things about them. But that's not what this video is here to share. We're here to talk about the darker side. It's easy to find lists proclaiming the unsafest cities in the United States, but it's not as easy to find it in Canada. It's more hush-hush. So grab yourself some Tim Hortons, and let's get into this list. 25. Canada's Largest City and Economic Heart Toronto, Ontario is home to 2.7 million people and has a fairly low crime rate as far as major cities are concerned. But 2018 was an alarming year for the city. The city achieved the highest murder rate in the nation, with a homicide rate of 3.11 per 100,000 people. This was a record high dating back about 30 years. It topped New York City's homicide rate, which was 3.05 per 100,000 people. Since 2015, homicide rates have been rising in Hogtown and have not been slowing down. Crime as a whole is also on the rise, and hopefully won't reach levels that the city had in the 70s and 80s, when it was notorious for gangs and violence. Assaults and robberies have also risen in the past five years. Drug crimes have gone down largely due to decriminalization, which alters how the statistics are read and provides a rosier picture than what it really is. Another thing Toronto has is biker gangs. Before Hell's Angels came into Ontario, Toronto was home to many violent Canadian biker gangs like Satan's Choice, Last Chance, and the Red Devils. Oh, and not to mention, the loners. Motorcycle clubs are a very common type of gang in Canada, as well as other organized crime syndicates. As of 2010, there were at least 15 chapters of the Hells Angels within Ontario alone. The largest gang types within Toronto are traditional Italian mafia groups, ethnically African groups, and Eastern European crime mobs. Mexican cartels have also breached into the city. Still, modern-day Toronto is largely a safe major city. You probably have a higher chance of getting hit by a submarine falling from the sky than getting murdered on the streets. Coquitlam is number 24 and is a city within Metro Vancouver. Largely considered to be unsafe by locals within BC, the city is still fairly safe and has seen crime declining the last few years. The city's CSI score has dropped 11 points. There were no murders in 2018, and assault calls have also dropped. Sexual assault has slightly increased, but was well below the national Canadian average. Overall, Coquitlam isn't as bad as its reputation says. It is behind the national average in almost every category for 2018. Good improvement. We head out east to Quebec for number 23. Gatineau saw one murder in 2018, slightly below the national average. Assault calls were well above the national average, as well as sexual assault crimes and firearm offenses. Thankfully, robbery has gone down. In a rather worrying trend, drug trafficking has been on the uptick, as well as youth crime soaring to double the national average. The Gatineau Police Service announced in 2019 that auto thefts had risen by more than 50% over the previous year. About 60 vehicles were stolen. Hopefully this trend also ends. Halifax in Nova Scotia has seen a drop in crimes, but it is still humming above the national average in nearly all categories. There were eight murders, putting the homicide rate at nearly two per 100,000. Assault is above average, and sexual assault is 30 points above average. Thankfully, theft and robbery crimes are surprisingly low, but youth crime is rising. Drug trafficking is pretty high and above normal compared to other Canadian cities. A CTV report also states that homelessness has increased in the city, estimating that thousands of people now call the streets of Halifax their home. An estimate by Shelter Nova Scotia hints that upwards of 3,000 people may be homeless in Halifax, a city of 400,000. We head back to Ontario to the city of Hamilton. The city has seen an uptick in homicides recently, with 10 occurring in 2018. Unfortunately for the city, violent crimes have also gone up. This includes sexual assault and firearms offenses. 
Robbery is well above the national average, with 631 calls last year. Hamilton is also home to organized crime, such as the Lupino family, which itself is tied to the Nandrata family of Italy. In 2017 and 2018, several murders of mobsters happened around Hamilton and tensions were rising, according to the Toronto Star. In 2019, the son of Rocco Lupino was killed in front of his parents' home in Hamilton. This will certainly start a war amongst the mob families in the future. Hopefully these violent crimes can be squashed in this industrious city within the Golden Horseshoe. We're now within the top 20. Kingston, Ontario has seen crime rates rise significantly in the past five years. Violent crime is up mostly because of the rise in sexual assaults, which are up 50%. Some city officials blame the rise in sexual assault calls due to the rise of the Me Too movement. It really skews the data. Kingston is also extremely high on fraud cases, nearly double the national average. The city has also seen a spike in break-ins within the past few years. The mayor has blamed the recent rise in break-ins on drug addiction and mental health issues. Kitchener in Ontario has seen crime increase over the last few years. Murders have risen, assaults have risen, and sexual assaults have risen. But it doesn't stop there. Robberies and fraud cases have also risen. About the only crime that has dropped in Kitchener are cannabis trafficking related crimes. A lot of this crime may have something to do with motorcycle gangs in the city. Prior to the Hells Angels taking over the city, Satan's Choice, a local biker gang, trafficked drugs into the city. It is likely this continues today. Montreal is the largest city in Quebec. The city has a reputation for being cold, snowy, and criminally active. Does it live up to its criminal reputation? There were 25 murders in 2018 and nearly 7,000 assault calls. Those numbers may seem high for a city of 1.7 million, but actually, the city saw a decrease than from previous years. To the city's credit, they have been focusing on stopping gang activity. Montreal was a feared location in the 80s, as the Hells Angels took over the city by storm. Turf wars broke out in the 90s, and that resulted in over 150 people killed and at least one car bomb. As well as biker gangs, the Italian Mafia has its grip on the city. The Rizzuto crime family operates out of Montreal and controls southern Quebec and Ontario. There was a lot of mob violence in the 70s, which resulted in the deaths of many mobsters. As of 2019, due to recent events and the death of a prominent mobster in Montreal, there has been left an opening in the mobster underworld of Montreal. Experts expect there will be a fight to take control after the death of this mobster. So yes, this city does live up to its criminal name. Crime in Burnaby, BC concentrates around various areas in the city, but by far the worst area in the city is Metrotown. It has the highest density of crimes, mostly being robbery and auto thefts. Another high area for crimes is along the Kingsway Corridor. The main issue for Burnaby is auto thefts and break-ins. Other crimes are relatively low and below the national average. To Burnaby's credit, crime in the city has been going down. London, Ontario has a few rough neighborhoods, and according to crime maps, the Horton and Wellington neighborhoods are shown to have the highest rate of theft and robbery. Crimes related to drugs usually concentrate around the drug den homes dotted throughout the city and in Richmond Row. Citizens in the past few years have risen up to say that they are upset at the downward decline of downtown London. They say that commercial properties are being allowed to fall into states of disrepair, and that other areas in the city are too dark to walk at night. The city also has a gang presence that continues to grow. Richmond, British Columbia is located within Metro Vancouver. Over the past few years, crimes have declined, but they're still much higher than the citizens would like. The city also has a higher than average homicide rate with eight murders in 2018. Firearm offenses are also high, but thankfully, robberies are lower than average. Breaking and entering incidents, though, are above the national average. Unique to Richmond compared to other Canadian cities is the amount of bicycle thefts Richmond has. The downtown area is easily traversed via bicycle, but also has a very high bike theft rate. Overall, the city is in a state of limbo, with some crimes being above the national average, while others are well below it. St. John's in Newfoundland and Labrador is located on the tip of the Avalon Peninsula and is Canada's easternmost city with 108,000 people. The city has been in the news for many years recently, mainly because it's been ranked as one of Canada's most dangerous cities. But in 2018, there was a breakthrough. Most of the crimes in the city had declined. In a city of just over 100,000, there were three murders in 2018. The city's assault and sexual crime rate is much higher than the national average, but did decline over previous years. Being an important port city for Canada, there is a surprisingly low amount of drug trafficking being reported. 
The city also has a very high suicide rate and is tied with Toronto for the highest child poverty rates in all of Canada. At number 13, we have Calgary, Alberta. With a population of 1.3 million people, Calgary is one of Canada's larger cities. Unfortunately for Calgary, crime is increasing. 2018 saw an increase in murders over the previous year. There were 29 reported homicides. While assaults and sexual assaults are well below national average, they too are on the rise. Another category that the city falters at is the robbery rate and the amount of break-ins. They are well above the national average. There is also a varied street gang presence in Calgary, including Aboriginal street gangs, Punjabi street gangs, Black street gangs, Lebanese street gangs, and of course, the biker gangs. The city has seen an uptick in drug trafficking from Somali, Afghan, and Pakistani street gangs. In the 2000s, there was a bloody gang war between various gangs that ended with at least 25 murders. Abbotsford, British Columbia has earned a reputation for its motorcycle gangs, Punjabi street gangs, and other multicultural gangs. The Town Hill neighborhood has seen many gang conflicts in recent years, and crime prevention groups have tried to focus on the youth who are entering these gangs. Crime as a whole has increased in Abbotsford, and for a city of its size, it has a much higher than normal homicide rate, beating out the Canadian national average and the U.S. national average. There were nine murders in 2018. Youth criminal acts are also on the rise, and the main cause of concern among families and city leaders. 11. Thunder Bay is an isolated city in Ontario and has a population of 115,000. Nearly every crime category is above the national average. 2018 saw seven reported homicides. Sexual assaults and assaults are far above the national average. Robbery is also very high. On average, there is about 5,500 crimes per 100,000 people. Think about that. What makes all these statistics even more concerning is how a general social survey found that only 31% of violent crimes were actually reported to police. Sadly, Thunder Bay's isolation has led to the rise of youth boredom, which in turn seems to lead to crime and drug use. And related to drug use is the rise of drug trafficking in Thunder Bay. According to the Thunder Bay Police Service, there has been an increase in gang-related killings largely due to the drug trade. We break into the top 10 with Windsor, Ontario. Windsor is located across the Detroit River from Detroit, Michigan, which is famous for its auto industry and homes costing only about $8,000. Windsor is not only a polluted city, it's also a haven of crime. A police investigation starting in 2016 found out that a major sex trafficking ring has been running between Windsor up the 401 corridor to Toronto. As of 2019, police still know about it, but no arrests have been made. It can only be assumed that they are monitoring the situation. According to the Windsor police, someone attempts a break-in every five and a half hours in Windsor. Ambulance. Uh, police car. See? Told you crimes in Canada. So yes, every five and a half hours, someone attempts a break-in in Windsor. That means it shouldn't be surprising that property crimes are the most common type of crime in Windsor. The breaking and entering and the robbery rates of this city are well above the national average. As an example, out of 100,000 people, 691 people will have something of theirs broken into in the average year in Windsor. Fraud is also very high, with 400 people out of 100,000 being victims of fraud. Drug trafficking of cannabis is also well above the national average. At number 9, Surrey in British Columbia has seen a slight decline in crimes, but it is still one of Metro Vancouver's most dangerous cities, with a very high rate of violent crimes and lots of drug activity, not to mention gangs. It is also shockingly high, especially if you head south of the border into Washington city of Bellingham, which has very little crime. But Surrey is seeing significant growth and possibly isn't capable to handle this growth. The city is currently working on forming their own municipal police department after corruption within its RCMP detachment. There were 12 homicides in Surrey and over 2,095 reported assault cases. The homicide rate is far above the national average. Rates of robbery are above the national average, as is breaking and entering. Fraud cases are extremely high, 
This fraud statistic may be due to the large immigrant populations. They may be seen as easier to trick. Surrey is known for its dangerous street gangs, especially the Punjabi gangs, which dominate the city. Surrey's Newton community is considered the hotbed for gang violence. The Punjabi gangs are said to have turf wars with other South Asian gangs. Dangerous motorcycle clubs also have chapters in Surrey. Surrey is a growing city, but has a growing crime problem, and needs to be stopped before it spills over. Surrey has noted in crime reports that the city's SkyTrain stations are a source of crime within the city. Increased police patrols have unfortunately not seemed to drop the crime. Surrey is also known as the car theft capital of North America, not just Canada. All of North America, including the United States. In recent years, Good work by the RCMP have drastically lowered these types of crime, but the name still stands. Just west of Surrey is Vancouver, often considered Canada's shining beacon of a city, often ranked as one of the best cities in the world to live in, but there is a darker side. Did you know that Vancouver's downtown east side neighborhood has the highest drug-related issues in all of North America, including the United States? Starting in the 1980s, this district of Vancouver began a heavy decline with drugs being the main cause. It is estimated that upwards of 5,000 people in the downtown east side have some sort of mental issue. The BBC calls the downtown east side home to the worst drug problem in all of North America. Simply walking down the street in this area, you will be surrounded with the mentally ill, homeless, tense drugs and human waste. And it's not even just one street. We're talking blocks and blocks. Vancouver as a whole is seeing a rise in fentanyl overdoses. A report in 2014 says they've seen the heroin overdoses be replaced with fentanyl overdoses. Overdose deaths have increased 725% between 2003 and 2018, and it's up over 260% among minors. In 2018, there were 353 overdose deaths reported just in Vancouver's downtown east side alone. Vancouver Fire and Rescue says on average, they are called to nearly 120 overdose emergency calls a week. But that isn't it yet for Vancouver. There are reported 1,000 street sex workers in the city, and according to a study by McLean's, most do it to support their drug addiction habit. Sadly, 40% of these sex workers are made up of Canadian aboriginals. The New York Times described Vancouver's downtown east side as being as bad as Manhattan in the 70s and 80s. The downtown east side is also a hotbed for such things as tuberculosis and syphilis. Drug use is so prevalent that in 2013, a study found that nearly 20% of the people were HIV positive and 70% were hepatitis C positive. That's third world levels. Vancouver police play a unique role within the downtown east side, as not only do they provide policing, but they are often the front lines to mental health issues. They often don't do arrests as people openly shoot up and do drugs in front of them. They more or less monitor the issue in the district. Anything goes. As for the rest of the city, crime is going up. 2018 saw 20 murders and a very high rate of sexual assault. Robbery and break-ins are also very high. According to the Vancouver Police, the largest crime groups within Vancouver are motorcycle gangs like the Hells Angels, as well as Chinese triads, Punjabi street gangs, Persian gangs, and Eastern European gangs, including some Italian gangs. There have been numerous acts of violence and murders due to gang wars. 2009 saw gangs kill at least 20 people. Alright, that's enough. Vancouver is a beautiful city, but it has many issues that are often overlooked in rankings online. Staying in British Columbia, but heading east to a drier environment, we come to Kelowna. The small city of Kelowna has had issues with crime for a long time. In 2013, it had the highest crime rate of any city in Canada. But today, crime rates are starting to decline. There were five murders in 2018, which were well above the national average per capita. Property crimes is also very high, as is fraud and breaking and entering. Drug offenses include impaired driving, which is far above the national average. Kelowna ranks among one of the highest in the country for heroin possession as well as ecstasy. The main issue for the city is the ongoing drug crisis, and if this can be solved, Kelowna might be ranked a safer place to live. A lot of these drugs are being transported and brought into the city by street gangs. Yes, Kelowna has a strong Hells Angels presence. This has been the top concern for residents and the local RCMP detachment. Winnipeg, Manitoba has often been ranked as one of the most miserable large cities in Canada to live in. Some of that has to do with the frigid weather, but a lot of that has to do with the crime as well. 2018 saw city's crime overall increase. 
24 people were murdered. There were over 3,290 assault calls. Sexual assault calls were also alarmingly high. Nearly 300 people were robbed per 100,000, and almost 700 people had something broken into out of 100,000. These stats tower above the national average. In the past, Winnipeg has had the highest murder rate in all of Canada, at a rate of 5 per 100,000 people. While this ranking is based on 2018, 2019's data is quite concerning and worth a mention. In 2019, the city is having what is called a crime crisis. There have been over 40 murders in the city. Aboriginal street gangs dominate Winnipeg. A report in 2013 estimates that there are at least 35 different gangs in Winnipeg. The second largest are African-Canadian street gangs. Within the past few years, gang turf wars have increased. Drugs related to this war are also a common occurrence within the city. On a related note, drug abuse is higher than the national average, as is the poverty rate. Some estimates are as high as 24%. In fifth place, we're back to British Columbia, to the provincial capital of Victoria. CBC reports that crime has risen 20% since 2016. Victoria's police chief says that the city doesn't have enough officers to cut the crime down, and that the statistics show it. Nearly 1,000 people out of 100,000 have a chance of being assaulted in Victoria. Theft and robbery is also very high. Some of this may have something to do with it being a tourist city, and tourists are an easy target. Victoria is a popular day trip for Washingtonians south of the border. Fraud cases as well are double the national average. Thankfully, drug offenses are low in the city, and there was only one reported homicide in 2018. Its property crimes, assaults, and robberies make this one of the more dangerous cities in Canada. Fourth place is Saskatchewan's capital, Regina. Unfortunately, crime has seen a significant increase in the capital. Crime rates are up 9% from 2017, with theft being the largest gainer at 11.4%. 2018 saw over 1,600 motor thefts. It is no surprise, then, the breaking and entering and robbery rates of the city are skyrocketing above the national average. Firearms offenses are also well above the national average, with 47 firearms offenses reported. Sexual assaults and regular assaults are also well above the national average. About 520 of 100,000 people will be assaulted in Regina, and nearly 150 out of 100,000 will be sexually assaulted. Youth crimes are also far above the national average. Teens must be very bored in Regina. A report by the Criminal Intelligence Service of Saskatchewan said that there are numerous gangs in the province, but they can currently only identify 12. A majority are Aboriginal. Drug running is also a common thing among the gangs as well as prostitution. Regina police say that many local gangs are being wiped out by gangs from outside of Regina, bringing a whole new threat level to the region. They've seen a massive jump in weapons trafficking. Unfortunately for Regina, the city has been bouncing on and off the top spot for the highest crime rate in all of Canada for the past 10 years. Edmonton, Alberta has the dubious award of seeing crime continue to increase the past decade. The city saw 41 homicides in 2018, which is an alarming number, some of which can be blamed on the increased gang activity. The top gangs in the city are Aboriginal gangs, followed by Black gangs, Middle Eastern gangs, and Punjabi gangs. Recently, Mexican drug cartels have seen an increased presence in the city, followed by biker gangs. With this increased drug presence, Edmonton's police chief vows to cut meth usage in the city by 20%. This is coming off a year that saw record high overdose deaths in the city. In 2015 alone, the city seized $11.2 million worth of meth. Robbery and breaking and entering levels are higher than the national average. If you live in Edmonton, you are likely to have your house broken into. 700 out of 100,000 people have their home broken into. For fraud, over 600 people are tricked out of 100,000. Theft is very high across the city and is concentrated around transit centers or the east end of the city. On average, there is 800 liquor store thefts per month, and there's indications a lot of these thefts are related to the meth crisis in the city. 60% of drug violations within the city are meth-related. A study by Statistics Canada, using data from 2018 and 2019, shows that Edmonton had the highest concentration of meth in its wastewater at 500 grams per million people per week, more than any other city in Canada. In second place, we have the largest city in Saskatchewan, Saskatoon. The city has a higher than average homicide rate with five known homicides in 2018. But sadly, that number increased to 16 in 2019. Where it gets worse is when you look at the assault and sexual assault rates, which are very high for a city of its size. The robbery and breaking and entering rate is astronomical. If you live in Saskatoon, 
900 people out of 100,000 will have some form of breaking and entering crime occur to them. You also have a very high rate of fraud and drug-related crimes. In 2017, Saskatoon had the highest crime rate for large cities in all of Canada. Unfortunately, this trend has continued for the past 10 years, as well as its sister city of Regina. Youth gangs and youth crime are among the highest in the country. Like Regina, Saskatoon has a gang issue, and many gangs claim parts of the city. Saskatoon's north and central neighborhoods are often seen as a high gang area. Again, Aboriginal gangs are the leading gangs in the city. This ties right in with the very high poverty rate among First Nations in Saskatoon. Related to poverty, the city reports at least 475 homeless people within the city. Having just hit the milestone of 100,000 people, Red Deer should be celebrating, but instead it isn't. In 2018, Statistics Canada named Red Deer the most dangerous city in all of Canada. Across the board, this small city has high rates of crime above the national average from homicides, assaults, sexual assaults, and firearms offenses. Where it gets even more worrisome is when you look at the robbery rates, which are very high, as are fraud cases. 800 people out of 100,000 will be involved in some sort of fraud case. Even scarier, 1,000 425 people will be involved with a breaking and entering crime out of 100,000 people. That leads all of Canada for a city of this size. Drug trafficking is very high in Red Deer. Quite often, there will be headlines recounting that Mounties have seized cocaine or some other form of drug. A large part of the drug issue is due to the prevalence of biker gangs. The Hells Angels firmly control Red Deer and certainly run drugs through the city. The rise in drugs has also led to the rise of drug overdoses. To try and counter, an overdose prevention site was made in the city. Unfortunately, the RCMP is called to this overdose site 3,750 times a month due to criminal and non-criminal issues. Red Deer is a small city, so it's easy to have its numbers skewed. All these statistics should be viewed at a city-by-city -city basis. Just because it's ranked 4th, 5th, or 18th really doesn't mean anything until you look at the data as a whole. Five robberies in a town of 1,000 can get you the same CSI score as 50 robberies in a city of 500,000. So understand your data and don't use this video as an easy way to point fingers at cities. Canada is a magnificent country that begs to be explored. All too often we're painted these perfect pictures of the country, but that isn't the case. These are real issues happening to real people, and their real lives are being affected by it. I truly hope these communities can fix these issues and look forward to a brighter future. I really want to thank you for watching. I had no idea this video would be this long. So much content had to be cut to reduce the time, and even then, we're nearing 30 minutes. No joke, we had in-depth analysis for every city on this list, but unfortunately, we had to cut a lot. Thank you for watching, and now go. Go explore Canada, it's beautiful.